Awesome. Well, welcome, welcome. We actually, uh, this is this is an awesome podcast. This is something special uh, to my heart in particular. Uh, this is different um, to our normal Bubble Dutch, um, but we're gonna we're gonna I guess go after the mental health area um, for the next few weeks because um, as a church we've just started uh, I guess looking at mental health, uh, mental emotional health, which is um, which is awesome. Uh, we have a special guest, David Riddell. Hey. That's awesome. Um, he is a um, he's a well known counselor. He is um, he's the amount of people that have have gone to see him for a weekend and come back much better people has just been. I mean, I've seen the fruit. Um, and for context, we barely talked, um, so we really don't know each other that well. But I know of 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 the work, and I've seen the fruit of what you do, and it is um, it is life changing. That's to say the least. Like it is from what I've seen, it's yeah, it's it's crazy, and, and it's a life's work too. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's yeah. it. Um, so you're originally from Nelson, and um, you're still from Nelson, right? Mm, still from yeah. Nelson. It's the place where God yeah. lives, as we say in our church. But I think you actually started that. Might have. It been, was yeah. definitely you that started that. Yeah. Um, cool. So uh, this this area is uh, I guess special uh, to my heart because uh, I've. I'm I'm on a journey with this whole area, um, especially, and I have a real heart for it um, because there's a I guess when you're as a person who has gone through a lot of um, I guess anxiety depression, you there's an understanding for other people, um, and you know who's gone through it. So there's like a there's like a oh there's a unity within the people that have had it because they're kind of like oh actually you actually understand what I'm going through, um, but you're the I guess. Your your main role is pulling us out of that, Indeed and like giving us tools to really, you know, leave that kind of that kind of area um, as soon as possible. Yeah, the sooner the better. I know it's it's great. It's I've great. been depressed, you know. I've been down. I've been. I know what it is to feel like I needed to protect other people from my company because I was just so down, so sad, yeah. and so I avoided people. And the more I avoided people, the worse it got, and you became. Thoroughly isolated sometimes. Not a good place. Well, I know for a fact that myself has been through that. I know a lot of people around me have been through that. Can we can we hit that? What is what does that look like? So you were just saying, um, you know, you felt you felt so hurt and I guess broken that you wanted to isolate because you knew that you were just damaging other people or like feeling like you're hurting other people somewhat. Well, well I ended up wanting to protect them from my own company. For sure, that's it. I had yep. no good news, I had nothing witty to say, I had no <laughs> wonderful thing to yeah, share. Yeah. I was yeah. basically a liability in my own mind and yeah. in my life. I had no money, no qualification, nothing to be proud of. What did I have to offer? I yeah. didn't have anything, but that's just one cause of depression. Yeah. There's actually four or five major causes of depression. And, and the Bible says, you know, um, that uh, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Mm. Well, my hope was deferred. I wasn't getting the woman of my dreams. I wasn't getting a qualification that gave me any status. I wasn't doing much at all. In fact, really, mm. everything I pointed to was a failure. Oh. So I began to have hope deferred. Mm. Uh, and disappointment upon disappointment upon disappointment, how much can you stand of that? Yeah. And if you had no real nurture or hands-on parenting and you didn't build up that nice big fat storehouse of goodwill and credibility and self-confidence, you know, the battery runs flat pretty quick. And I was running on a yeah. flat battery by the time I was 17. Oh, wow. No charge. Yeah. And so that's, the, I guess, that, so you're talking about, the, I guess when you had 17 is the, the point that we were talking about, the example that you just gave before. I shut down. Yeah. So what? What do you like? So there's there's two parts of that for, for me that I, I would love to tackle is the if I'm there, what can I do? But then the, also the other side was how can I equip the people around me to handle me because I don't want to shut them out. But like yeah. I know I need to as well. There's like a awkward like I need you but I don't want to hurt you. Well, the brain builds up a whole lot of sick thinking. Yeah. To get depressed, you got to do a whole bunch of sick thinking. You know, stink mm. thinking results in stink emotions. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I've got to get to the stink thinking. Mm. But I discovered that even getting to the stink thinking wasn't enough because I would put a layer of positivity over a layer of despair or self-hurt or harm or rejection. That didn't last because what was underneath would break through again. Yeah. Positive thinking is not a permanent cure, mm. especially if you're trying to tell yourself lies about how wonderful you are when actually you think you're crud. Yeah. So that's a problem too. For sure. 
Yeah. And um, so I had to really do some hard digging to find out in my life where had I come to a wrong conclusion that turned into a wrong belief, that turned into stinky thinking, that turned into stinky emotions five, 10, 15 years later. Hmm. Because this thing is a slow burn. For sure, yeah. But that's just one cause of depression. You know, uh, when I sit down with a depressed person, the first thing I want to do is antidote that poisonous belief as quickly as I possibly can. Hmm. I've pull, pulled people out of a suicidal ideation in 30 minutes sometimes. But what I have oh, to wow. do is find the king lie that is sucking the life out of them. Hmm. I have to find the poison chalice. I have to find the poisonous belief, and I have to do it quickly. Hmm. So I listen to hear what their despair is. And I'm not just hearing the topic, because sometimes they're so depressed they can't even talk. Yeah. I want to know what's coming out of them. And sometimes, you know what I find? I find either one of about five different things. I either find self-hatred. They've rejected themselves. I'm a loser. I'm the one cracked cup in the cupboard. God made a mistake when he made me. There's mm. something wrong with me. I'm a woman in a man's body. I'm an idiot in an idiot's body. I'm a sucker in a sucker's <laughs> body. I'm yeah. a reject, and I have been yeah. my whole time. It started oh. when I went to kindergarten, and the kids didn't want to know anything to do with me. Mm. Or they called me smelly, or they called me dummy, or I could just never find a friend. So those conclusions go down in a child's mind. Wow. They become the beliefs that engender rejection, which engenders isolation. Ten years later, you've got a depressed teenager. Mm. So I'm looking, wow. for that, I'm looking for that belief right from the get-go. Yeah. Where are they stuck? When you're stuck, your hope is deferred. When you're stuck, you're not achieving the qualification you want. You're not achieving the girlfriend or the boyfriend you want. You're not achieving your driver's license. You're not achieving a qualification. It's like you've already fallen off the merry-go-round and you're only 15 years old. Yeah, yeah. And that's when you start crucializing what actually isn't crucial. You have no patience. You have no resilience. Your life's over mm. at 15 because you've got freckles or because zits or because nobody likes you. Hmm. That's that sort of lack of resiliency that teenagers are noted for. Hmm. So that was me. At 16, 17, I assumed that really I wasn't going to get anywhere. Hmm. I bombed out of university in my first year after everybody being so proud of me and making an effort to get me there. I let them all down. I failed them all. I was wow. ashamed. I didn't really want to go back and admit that I'd totally lost the plot. Hmm. And so that was just one example of depression. It's what I call the stuck depression yeah. But what about the ex existential crisis? I don't know why I'm here. I have no purpose bigger than myself. I've been selfish. I've lived for pleasure. But I haven't got a cause worthy of my life. Hmm. I'm just a fart in a bottle. You know, hmm. what am I doing? <laughs> yeah. I really don't have anything sure. to offer. Yeah. I don't have any purpose. You know, self makes a very small cause to live for. And often very narcissistic people can get depressed uh, because actually they've discovered that getting everything they want doesn't satisfy. It doesn't mm. help. So that's what's called an existential crisis. It means a lack of purpose and a lack of meaning and a lack of reason to get up in the morning. Hmm. But what about another cause of depression? Like um, emotional deprivation, no mothering, no fathering. Yeah. It's like a balloon a week after the party. It's sad, it's flat, it's a has-been balloon. But these kids, their spirit has never been pumped up. They don't have anything to get up in the morning for. Hmm. They don't believe in themselves. They haven't been encouraged and they haven't been introduced to life. You know, I, I took a depressed client for a walk around the block because she didn't want to talk. She was just in the glums. She was so under the weather that she really wasn't functioning. Hmm. I said, well, let's not talk today. Let's just go for a walk. And so we went for a long walk around the block. And as we walked, I commented, I taught her about the names of the clouds in the sky because she didn't know anything about the names hmm. of the clouds in the sky. She cool. didn't, I've been a, a pilot, so I know weather. And I taught her how to predict the That's weather cool. by the clouds. Yeah. I taught her about the breed of trees that were around us and what use they were in the urban landscape. And I told her about the breeds of dogs and what their characteristics were. Yeah. Uh, we even talked about the cars. And I introduced her to various models of cars and what their strengths and weaknesses were. Hmm. And I just chatted. All the way around the block, I just chatted about mm. architecture, about horticulture, about whatever I saw. Yeah. When I got back, I said, okay, what did you learn from that walk? And she said, that compared with you, I'm not alive yet. I haven't been introduced to any of that stuff. I don't know the names of trees. I don't mm. know what they're good for. I don't know what the clouds are telling us. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what the, what, anything about the cars I see. She said, compared with you, I'm an alien on an alien planet who hasn't, can't relate to any of it. You follow? Yeah. No parenting. 
sad, flat depression. Right. I call that the orphan's depression. Hmm. Yeah, they're an emotional orphan. Wow. Make sense? All right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's just three different types of depression. Yeah. They're all doing the same thing. For sure. And yet totally different causes. Now, my job as a counsellor is to figure out what's driving this despair and antidote it as quick as I possibly can yep. to get in there. I was doing a seminar one time, and a woman walked in, and I could see black clouds over her. She was looked like she was in a grip of death. And, uh, and uh, when morning tea time came, I, I went looking for her, but she wasn't there. She'd gone already. And so I shot her out the door, and there she was way down the road. So I ran after her, hmm. and I said, what's up with you? You've come in out of the blue. You're not a seminar participant. You've just poked your nose in. She said, I'm so sorry. I was just curious to see. I saw this living wisdom sign, and I thought maybe there was something there to help me. Hmm. And I said, what's the need? And she said, well, I just I despair of living. I want, I want to kill myself. I'm hmm. just over it. She said, social welfare are going to take my ch- last child off me today. Wow. I can't live with the guilt and the knowledge that I've been such a bad mother. Hmm. If I'm that much of a liability, it's time to end my life. And she was actually looking for a truck she could chuck herself under when I bought her. And so, you know, for the next 10 minutes, we sat under a tree and I just mainlined antidotes to that poisonous thinking straight into her. God Mm. needs you. You exist because God needs you too. Your life is not an accident. He has a purpose for you. He needs you to express himself through and he Mm. can give you back mothering and mothering skills and you can earn back your self-respect. And this is how you do it. One, mm. two, three. And yep. as I'd mainlined hope into her, I saw the life coming back into her lies. Wow. And then suddenly that suicidal spirit lost its grip on her and she broke into a smile and she said, You know what? I think I can live again. Well, wow. yeah. That's so that's great. what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So I guess, yeah, you can't answer, I guess we can't answer that question with a very quick answer. <laughs> well, it's like, yeah, there's, a, well, we there's, can. A further, there's a whole thing we further can. back. We can say, Find the thought that is stinging and stinging and stinging them. It's mm. like it's like being trapped in an electric fence. Turn the power off. Yeah. Get to that belief that's crushing them yeah. and antidote it immediately. So how would you find that? Would you say that it's always something that's like, would you say it's the one memory that keeps flashing back? Is that kind well, of Well, it could be, like but I a, say to them, what is the one thought that is hurting you the most? Mm. And then they'll nail it for me. Well, Job done. Yeah, yeah. All I've got to do now is antidote it. Yeah. Not with positive thinking, not with try harder, not with self discipline, mm. but with a single insight that smashes it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love doing that. I love smashing <laughs> those, 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 those. <laughs> that's good. That's what we need, that, you know? Well, that's what I earn my living doing. Oh, it's good. You know, it's because a, everybody is being crushed by a lie. Yeah. Or two lies, or five lies, or a hundred lies. My job is to be a lie detector and find that lie and free them from it as quick as I possibly can. Mm. Yeah. So, like, so there's. I guess what I'm I, I'm understanding more is there's there's the, the level that you almost need um, professional counselling with to to really like hit it to hit something like that I guess the a it's your blind state. spot that gets you yeah you need a professional to show you your blind spot so and so there's that so there's I guess there's that level in a moment so for so if there's someone that's in that moment like currently what what would you say would be like tools for urgent care like yeah. for themselves yeah yeah because i guess that's the thing that i guess a lot of people get stuck in they're just like but yeah okay well the first thing you have to do is depression and despair is a lack of hope mm. we only despair when we lose hope okay yeah, yeah and sure. hope deferred makes the heart sick so my job is to mainline hope back into them as quickly as possible yeah if i can get them hoping again mm. then i can give them vision back and I can roll back the despair. But on what basis did they stop hoping? Where did hope go? What happened to hope? Mm. You can't live without hope. You're going to kill yourself without any hope. Mm. And, and hell is a place of utter hopelessness. But yet God calls himself the God of all hope. Mm. So I need to show them why they can hope again and why they're believing a lie. You know, lies take no prisoners. If you can believe a lie, if, you, if, if, if the devil can get you to believe a lie, then the father of lies has got you. He's got mm. access to you, yep. to your moods, your emotions, your future, and, and he can get to you. And so I, I want to mainline truth into them and tell them that actually God needs them. He has purpose for them. He has planned for them. He has desire for them. And above all, he's placed something of himself in them that has never been placed in anybody else. Mm. And their mission is to find that and bring it forth. 
And when they have that, they have hope, they have purpose, and they have something to get out of bed for. Yeah. So, like, in those... That's, yeah, that's a great answer. Flip. Um, so, I, w- I always want to still go into that, but what do you... So, I guess there's a... I've, I've come across um, a few people um, that have... In those moments of, like, real, like, okay, I'm, I'm done... What kind of tool can you give us, like a, a tool to like at least keep them going for the next few days till they can actually get some, I guess, professional help? Or like, what tools do you have as like urgent care? So like emergency, hey, like this is could be a life or death moment. What do you? Well, don't run straight past what I just said. No, if no, you can it's find definitely that, that poisonous sort of, yeah. belief. If you can find that poisonous self-talk, For sure. if you can find that mistaken conclusion that they really are done, and yeah. you can antidote that. No, you're not. Something in your life must die, but it's not your life. Hmm. It's something in your life. Something yeah. must stop. It's an, it's an intolerable. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Something is intolerable, but it's not your life that it's intolerable. It's a thing in your mind that's killing you. Hmm. That's got to stop. So you distinguish yeah. between them and what they're thinking, between yep. them and what they're believing. Don't leap out of a train just because it's going through a tunnel. It's only a tunnel. You'll soon be through it. Don't jump out of the train in panic or in fear. Yeah. Yeah? We've That's all good. been through tunnels. Yeah, yeah. But if we can persist and hang in, we sure. will come out the other side. Mm. But you're absolutely right. Something has to stop. This is intolerable. Mm. But the solution is it's not your life that has to stop. It's the thing in your life that shouldn't be there. That has to stop. So you'd, I guess you'd be... So if someone in that moment um, that is like there deeply, you'd be like, okay, there's... I guess you'd search through what like a, a trigger... Point. Like, what would it look like for me if you, if you told me... So for example, I was there and you, you, you had like two minutes to tell me something that would help me get to that or identify something. What would okay. you... I'd say, don't judge the future by your past. That's good. Because that's what you're doing. Yeah. You're saying is. the future is just going to be more of the past. The past sucks. The future sucks. I'm out of here. Yeah. Yeah? Don't judge the future by the past. Your feelings are only telling you about the past. They can tell you nothing about the future. They know nothing of the future. Feelings are always wow. hindsighted That's and retro sighted. Yeah? Feelings they, know nothing they, of the future. They That's can't good. That's see the point. future. Yeah. So don't stop judging the future by the past. The future has to change the moment you change your beliefs. The moment you change your mind, hmm. the future is different. The moment you change loyalties and stop believing the lie, the future yeah. changes. Wow. Yeah. It's good. Wow. That's what I was, that was, that was, that was fishing for. I like that. that is great. Why? Far because out. as soon as you change your mind, then your self-talk changes, hmm. then your mood changes, then your choices change. And the yeah. moment your choices change, tomorrow is not going to be just like yesterday. Yeah. Wow. What, what you dwell on. Whatever yeah. gets your attention is going to get you. If you dwell on how useless you are, hopeless you are, how bad you are, how guilty you are, or how the future sucks, that's what's going to get your attention. That's what's going to get you. You desperately need to change your focus. Mm. And I change their focus. Yeah. Do it as fast as I can. That's good. You think about that child playing with your own child. Oh. You think of that, that child that adores you and doesn't care whether you've got your grades, your certificates, your diplomas, or a $1,000 in the bank. The child doesn't care. They just love you because they are fruit of your womb and they mm. know they only know you. And imagine yourself, your best friend, your son, your daughter. Imagine teaching them a better life. Imagine giving them a better life than what you've had. Imagine preparing them way better than you were prepared. And I start giving them something to hold on to. Hmm. Something to hope for. Yeah. Yeah. Give them a different picture of their future. That's so good. Yeah. Oh, wow. We need hope. Yeah. I think that's, well, that's the thing. Like, you, you don't see further. I mean, I know when, um, personally, when I've been in those states, it's like, I can't see further in a week. You know, like, yeah. you, you genuinely can't. And, you just, yeah. and everyone's just like, there's more than a week. And you just like, you get angry at them. Because yeah. they're just like, no, well, yeah. you can see that, but I can't. And it and, doesn't line up with what I've. Feel. And in my manual, in the Living Wisdom manual, I mean, I'm happy. I'll send you a copy of um, 30 truth coaches to directly mainline into a suicidal person that'll antidote this stuff. 
Oh, wow. Yeah, in fact, at right now they're preparing a play for the West End in London based on this chapter that I can send you on email. No way. Uh, and wow. they're showing how those insights can radically change a person's perception, and the moment their perception changes, their mood changes, and their whole physiology changes with no yeah. pills included. Far out. Yeah. That's huge. Awesome. The pill has not yet been invented that can give you hope uh, for the future and can give you self-confidence and self-worth back. Hmm. But truth can do that immediately. Wow. All you've got to do sure. is present something to them that they've never ever thought of or considered before. And hmm. immediately the brain starts making new circuits. The brain wow. makes new circuits as fast as the insights go in there. And then suddenly the energy is dissipated or the energy is, um, is uh, changed and charged and uh, they start getting mental energy back. All right. mm. To like, I guess, yeah, throw them forward. So, I mean, can we get the same the same question before? So, for, for me, was I guess we we talked about the um, uh, the you know, like looking forward. Yeah. What do we if we had the same like one minute, two minutes to say to like people around me? So, like, f- if it was for me, family, friends. Yeah. What could I say to them to yeah get to at least help? Because I, I I know there's a lot of people. Um, me and dad talked about it on, um, bubble Dutch, um, was the, the thing of, he has no, no understand, no understanding of depression, anxiety, like not, not at all. Like as in, cause he hasn't gone through it. So it's a, but he also wants to help, you know, what does it look like for someone who has no context for it? You know, if you well, had, had to forgive them 30 seconds of you like, don't, you what don't does it need look to like? be pregnant to help a pregnant woman. You don't need to have had a baby to help somebody deliver a baby. You just get in there and do whatever you can. Yeah. And so um, even if I hadn't have experienced depression myself, I would still know that there's something I can say to them to help give them meaning and purpose. Hmm. Um, for example, God needs them. God actually needs them. He doesn't create anyone already redundant, hmm. you know. And if you want to know proof that God needs you, go and have a look in the mirror. And if there's somebody there, that's all the proof you need that God needs you. Hmm. Because if he didn't need you, you would not exist. Yeah, He's called you into being because he has a need and a purpose for you. And so that is proof. I hmm. exist, therefore I am needed and wanted by my creator. Yeah, God doesn't sure. create anybody good. and then just leave them to it. That he really doesn't good. do that. So I guess... Um, because I've had, um, I've, I guess I've had a few, I guess, uh, talking about other examples. There's, when people get to the state, they often, like God decreases in magnification. Yeah, that's true, yeah. So if someone said, God, but God, if people yeah. be like, well, like, yeah. I'm barely coping. God's not yeah, helping yeah. me, so I don't even care. Yeah, yeah. What do you, like, what's the answer for, what would you say? Yeah, what would people do in those situations? Well, when we don't feel God, we've moved too far away. And when we don't hear God, it's because our mind is full of lies. So we actually have to let go the lies. We have to actually Mm. stop being loyal to the lies. Uh, We can experience God's love as soon as we, every time you let go a lie, there's room for truth. And as soon as people give up their loyalty Mm. to these ideas that I shouldn't exist or I'm useless or I'm too guilty to live. You know, Judas's uh, real sin was not to betray Jesus. It was to decree his own death and his own punishment. That was his real sin. Hmm. There was forgiveness there waiting for him, but he judged yeah. himself. And he judged himself because he didn't make room for God. Wow. The only way out of his yeah. condemnation and despair would have been to make room for God and to give up his right to judge himself. You know, Peter and Judas both betrayed Jesus, but Peter left all judgment to the Lord, Hmm. and the Lord forgave him. But Judas didn't. Judas believed he had the right to dish out to himself what he thought he deserved. And sometimes in Hmm. suicide, there's people who are saying, right, I'm going to decide whether I'm worthy or not to live. I'm going to decide whether I'm forgivable or not. I'm going to decide whether God exists or not. I'm going to do all this all by myself, Hmm. and I end up in utter failure and disaster. Hmm. And, And so... Uh, I say to them, this belief will take you down to hell if you don't give it up. Hmm. But you can give it up. It's your belief. You adopted it. You can renounce it. Yeah. If it doesn't suit you, if it's not working for you, and by the way, it's not working for you. Yeah, yeah, sure. Give it up. Yeah. Let it go. Oh. And so there's those lies like um, that that you've told yourself. Those, so we... 
how do I word this properly? Um, with how can I, I'm going to wear this well. Um, how do you overcome the positivity part of that? Because I guess the natural would be like, well, I you know like I'm going through this. This is this this is the truth that I'm believing right now. But then you can say, oh no, I'm not that. When you know it's the truth, what's the difference between saying? no to it versus changing the belief of it. I say to them, in terms of your beliefs, you've gone up a no exit. The beliefs mm. aren't working for you. Mm. And you have the right to dump those beliefs if they're not working for you. Yeah. If your concept of God is wrong, dump it. If it's not helpful, dump it. If your concept of yourself is just leading you to death, dump it. Yeah. Change your mind. Because why? Because in God there is all hope. And when we tell ourselves the truth, hope comes flooding back. Mm. When we tell ourselves lies, hope is hemorrhaging hemorrhaging yeah. fast and so if you stop telling yourself lies hope comes straight back but you've actually got to realize that what you're hanging on to is taking you over the cliff you better mm. let it go yeah and that's people's that's own that. responsibility yeah. you know it fully is yep i think that's 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 one thing that um i guess this whole era can be uh i've seen quite a lot is that you put the you put the responsibility in other people's hands. I've said to them now. Let me get this straight. Let me get this clear. You'd rather kill yourself than change your mind. Yeah. Yeah. And they go, ah, oh, yeah, no. Can you say it like that? Yeah. Yeah. No. For sure. Yeah. So how is it that you're so loyal to this belief that it's going to destroy you? How do you know? that this is a correct or appropriate response to your situation. Hmm. Before I killed myself, one thought occurred to me. Some people have wonderful lives. Why couldn't I be one of them? Hmm. My life was stink. I thought it was over when I was 17. And it occurred to me that some people have wonderful lives. If I could find out what they knew, even if I took the rest of my life to discover it, yeah. it'd be worthwhile. Hmm. Yeah, rather than just jumping off the planet because I was, uh, I was uh, stuffed, I was discarded, I was despairing. Hmm. Why don't I actually just spend what left of my life knowing what they know? Hmm. And that's what I did. That's good. And I'm yeah. still seeking it. Yeah, yeah. And my life is just getting better and better <laughs> and better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love that. Um, okay, we'll go on to another question real quick. Um, I would love to have this one. So... Uh, well, in New Zealand, I uh, had a look at the stats just before with um, uh, suicide. We'll talk about it again. Um, and the stats were that, what is it? I think that within the period 100,000 of deaths was females, it was 11%, and males, it was 22%. Why do you think it's, like, obviously it's still happening to females, but why do you think it's worse for males? What's well, 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 more women attempt suicide than men but they don't oh, wow. succeed. Often it's a cry for help. Often yeah. it's just a panic reaction. Far more women than men attempt suicide. But wow. when men Flip. attempt suicide, they do it. No muck yeah. about. It's just a bullet through the brain or whatever. Yeah. So they, they actually succeed in doing it. And often also, they don't talk about it. They just go away and do it. So everyone's shocked and everyone's freaked out. And, and that's a shame. And that's why when a man is retreating into himself, I go after him. I don't mm. wait for him to come to me. Mm. I say, you're isolating yourself, you're doing pornography, you're ashamed of yourself, you're mm. um, backing away from family, you're, in, you're uh, retreating into yourself, what's going on? Mm. And they go, oh, no, 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 no. I say, no, nah, that's not a solution or an answer. What's going on? Mm. Oh, you, you won't handle it. Try me. <laughs> Try me. Yeah, yeah. You know, spill the goods. Yeah. Nothing you're going to tell me is going to shock me. Been well, there, seen that, done that, got the T-shirt, helped other people out of it. Spill your guts. I want to know what's going on. You've got mm. a poison inside of you, and I want to clean it out. See? Yeah. So I just go after it. That's so cool. Yeah. Fire up. And, um, and you're right. But when I was in the States, they said, I said, they said to me, are you from New Zealand? I said, yep. What do you know about New Zealand? And I was expecting to say, you know, clean green sheep, whatever. Yeah. And they said, highest rated teenage suicide in the world, isn't it? Yeah. That's not what I wanted to hear. No. You know. Lord of the Rings, at least. And, and they said, you know, they said, uh, what do you think the cause is? And I said, well, the causes are multiple, but weak fathers, ha fathers that are not hands-on, hmm. means that the son or daughter is never fully validated. 
they don't feel affirmed. Mm. And as a result of that lack of masculine affirmation, they have a weak spine and they crumple more easily. They have less resiliency. Mm. Hands-on fathers are the best strengthening factor for teenagers that we know because their reassurance oh. matters. Mm. Far out. Yeah, so I guess the, yeah, I, I'm keen to go into that more because it's an interesting thing. I've seen, this is a personal opinion, but the, it's been really interesting seeing um, the, the are you okay um, awareness stuff we have on all the billboards here and it says it's okay to talk. Um, funny thing is that I feel like um, from what I've experienced myself as, as long as as well as what other people have experienced and, and told me is that when you do they're just like you don't need to tell anyone that you can you can keep it to yourself and it's interesting because we're pushing this there's a certain you know they're, they're pushing a campaign that says hey the expectation is that if you talk you'll be fixed and I'm like, hey, that doesn't work. A trouble shared is a trouble that now two people have got. Yeah, we need answers. Yeah, we I need think, real answers. So I've, I've it almost it's there's a there's almost an element of in me, and it's, there could be something you know off as well. But I'm more frustrated with that because I'm like, I think we're we're saying we've put an expectation that talking to someone is going to help when majority of the answers are no you should probably keep that to yourself because as soon as you talk about it more you're going to highlight it in yourself and it's going to be worse yeah but here's the plus side of it's okay to talk the plus hmm. side is that they're getting another perspective that their brain wasn't including it's like kids who feed on youtube or feed on tic tac they're just getting TikTok, one yeah. tic tac well they're just getting <laughs> Love it. they're just well, why is it a talk one talk and one tic out there's too many they're only just getting one perspective. Yeah. And as a result of that one perspective, they get further and further down into that um, ditch, that groove in their mind. Hmm. And what was a groove uh, becomes a, a canal or it becomes a chasm. And then they can't climb out of it. That's the only perspective hmm. they've got. Yeah. And so talking can introduce other perspectives. Yeah. And then through talking, somebody might accidentally say to them, don't leap out of the train, it's only going through a tunnel. Or yeah. somebody might say to them, well, then spend your life searching for truth. Because if you don't know it, then search for it. It'll give you purpose. Yeah. It'll give you a reason to get up in the morning. Or there's coming a time when you'll look back on this and mm. it'll all be just a, a bad memory. And they give them something to hang on to. Mm. And through talking, that can come up by accident. If they're not a trained for, for, for professional, it can still come up. Mm. So, hey, at least you've started this person to think of other perspectives. Yeah. That's, where that's it's, good. That's, where it's that's good. really important. Because yeah, I guess it's a blind spot thing. the brain has a dangerous ability uh, to, to lock itself up. Hmm. It has a, we call it fixation in the trade. You know, you can get fixated. You can walk into a post looking at a pretty girl. That's called fixation. Yep. You, can drive into the, you can drive into the back of the car in front of you because you were looking to your right to see what was coming around the roundabout. That's mm. fixation. Yeah. In fact, when you look at it, before most accidents or stupid acts, there was a time of fixation. And before suicide, there was always a time of fixation. They mm. get fixated on one thing, and that's wow. all they can see. Yeah, so yeah. My, my, what, what we need to do is just start to break them out of that fixation, show them other perspectives their brain is totally missing, especially youth. Youth are more vulnerable to getting fixated because of their limited experience than older person who's mm. had a lot more experiences to bring into the mix. Yeah, yeah. And that's why kid gets a crush, falls in love, becomes besotted. Besotted person says stuff off naughty, and they go, ah! Yeah. yeah. And, and, and kill See, themselves. The time. Yeah. yeah, that's Way fixation. It's yeah, just I was fixation. Gonna, that's, yeah, that's, as soon as you said that, like, that came up in my, yeah. my mind of like multiple yeah. Yeah, examples. Yeah. Um, now, now, rejection is uncomfortable, yeah. but it's not disastrous. Hmm. Unless you put your worth and your value in that person's hands. Yeah, well, that's it. In that's, which case, you're in trouble. Yeah, I mean, that's, you talked about this morning, that codependency thing. Yeah. And that's like, that's what is, because yeah. what is the, I guess, what does the the healthy codependency look like? Or what is the healthy, well, like? for example, that, that, you know, the teenage that's, you know, younger, um, that have, they're fixated on, you know, a, a you know, guy to girl, yeah. and they're just like, whoa, and then, yeah, that exact example, what, what is the what would the alternative or the healthy version of that look like? Well, the challenge for adolescents is to become emotionally independent, mm. to get on their own two feet. 
But a lot of teenagers skip that phase. They never yep. make friends with their own company. They don't make friends with themselves. They're always looking mm. for a, a pillow, a leaning post, a person to lean on, oh. to assure them, love yep. them, reassure them, comfort them, blah, blah. They never actually get on their own two feet. They go straight from dependency to codependency, and they miss the independence. If they do the independent mm. phase, as they're supposed to, yeah. they get on their own two feet, they complete their degree, they get a job, they start building a, a life yeah. by themselves, and they're not desperate for company the whole time, then they can go into interdependency, which is a healthy marriage. That's and cool. in yeah. interdependency, you can dialogue, you can negotiate, you can look after your own space, you can protect your own sovereignty, you can protect your own boundaries. You don't actually just have to lean all over another person. Hmm. But when I see kids falling in love far too soon, leaning all over each other, and then one day one of them panics and says, this is too much too soon, and they kick the props out, hmm. the other one falls over. Hmm. They never got on their own yeah. two feet. They went from the dependence of childhood straight into the codependence of a premature love relationship. Yeah. Wow. Make sense? Yeah, it does. That's good. Um, so I'm going to keep firing I do like questions. to make sense. Yeah, no, that's good. We'll keep, we'll keep firing away. So um, I want to talk about uh, an area of, um, because we've, I guess in general, the, the, this new thing to talk about emotions is quite, it's quite, it feels fresh uh, for my generation at least, um, that it's, it's becoming a normal thing to, to, to do, to talk about what's going on uh, more. But it's, it's interesting because I, I feel like um, because it's almost swung so far the other way that we're almost letting people be the victim and stay there. Mm. And, it's, mm. and I, what, is the, what do you think is the fix for that? Because I, I feel like it's, it's now cool to be like, oh, no, you're, you're not doing well. Okay, keep talking. You know, keep saying you know, you're not well because that's good. And then it's kind of where it stops. Yeah. What I feel like there's something missing. Like there is quite a big missing. thing missing there because there victims something. are annoying. <laughs> uh, it's true. So here's the thing. Are we expressing emotions and getting to grips with emotions and challenging emotions or are we just wallowing in emotions? Hmm. Wallowing is not fixing. You see, so to acknowledge an emotion is the first step. Yeah. But if you stop there, all you do is rehearse it. Cool. Yeah, yeah. No, You're rehearsing the emotion. Yeah, yeah. You're not actually finding the antidote to it. Hmm. Now, if it's a positive emotion, go for it. Rehearse yeah. it, wallow yeah. it, all good. <laughs> but yeah. if it's a negative emotion, focusing on it, dwelling on it, increases its power. Yeah. Because you're validating the delusion. Yeah, for sure. Validating the delusion. It's the tunnel, right? The, the yeah. building the canal. Yeah. Yeah. And so as a result of that, you get more and more fixated. It gets worse and worse. So it's like, you know, um, the more you talk about how bad your father was, the worse you feel. Hmm. Not going to help. Yeah. And uh, the more you talk about your negative emotions, yeah, you can get a little bit of sympathy. But this is the generation that has replaced wisdom with sympathy. Yes. They that's it. Yeah. They replace sure. truth with being compassionate. Hmm. It's just not enough. Yeah. It's truth that sets us free. It's not compassion. Compassion can make us feel connected. Sympathy can make us feel connected, but only truth sets us free. Mm. And so my bedside manner isn't the best, you know. I can be straight up. Uh, I can just go for people's jugular. I think it's so good, though. But what I will do is I'll set them free. I'm like House on the sitcom, you know. He knew the answer. He just wasn't very good at making conversation. Mm. Maybe I'm a bit on the spectrum. (laughs) (laughs) But I just go for the real issue. Yeah, well, it's it's almost like... But it's like... Because I had a conversation about that recently where, because um, it, was, it was pretty normal to say the truth in our family because of probably because of dad and his, you know, European nature of you say, your, you know, you say the truth more and you you want it. It's almost like a, like for me, I feel like it's a little bit different where I feel like I feel love in that because I'm like, yeah. oh, there's yeah. truth. Like yeah. I, they care about me yeah. enough to say something. That's right. Like that. Yeah. I don't know if everyone's built like that. I I have, well, we're have, talking about the Dutch now, aren't we? You know, oh, yeah. yeah. You know, uh, it was a Dutch woman that said to my wife, what a lovely dress. Too bad they didn't have it in your size. Exactly. You know, that's straight that's up. A, <laughs> that's actually true. I can imagine that. And, and I laughed. I thought that was extremely funny. Yeah. Uh, because it was just Dutch being straight up. Mm. And um, that, that goes with me. That's good. But, yeah. of course, if you put the rung in the ladder, 
you know, too far up the ladder, they can't reach it. You might be being straight up, mm. but you haven't put the lung, rung close enough to where they are. Yeah. Nobody wants yeah, a ladder where the first rung is 30 feet up, sorry, mm. metres. Yeah. You know, uh, you've got to have a uh, ladder where the rungs are actually climbable. Yeah. And that means little steps so they can actually do something towards where they want to go, mm. no matter how dysfunctional or discouraged they are. Yeah. So, like, if, and it, if you were talking to a community about um, what does it look like to facilitate someone who's going, you know, who's, who's playing, or well, not playing a victim, but how do, I guess how, do we, how, how does a community stop a victim mentality from existing? Well, what is the reward for being a victim? What is the reward for pretending you're powerless? You know, what's giving it oxygen? Hmm. I always say to people when they've got a bad habit, a bad mood, um, uh, a bad attitude, what's giving this thing oxygen? Why are you hmm. feeding it? What's in it for you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, blaming everybody else, your mum, your dad, your teachers, whatever. Yeah, that will help you not feel guilty and it will help you feel like it wasn't your fault, but it will also remove your power to do anything about it because if you didn't cause it, then you can't fix it. And so we actually, mm. we actually yeah. foster victimhood in people and we foster powerlessness in people. I say, hey, you're doing the stinky thinking. You're the one that has to stop doing the stinky thinking. So mm. you've got to find the belief driving it and antidote it as quickly as you possibly can. Mm. Because why? Because those lies are giving the father of lies his access to your moods, your emotions, and uh, your whole um, thinking. Hmm. There's only one thing that stinky thinking can cause, and that's stinky feelings. Hmm. And if we just live with that and wallow in it and rehearse it, how's that going to help us? Take the pot off the element. Turn the element off. Don't just take the lid off and let it all boil everywhere. Hmm. That's what a lot of yeah, yeah. psychotherapy does. It just takes the lid off the pot. I call it pot lifting therapy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And what it means is it boils over and there's a big mess and a big stink everywhere. Turn hmm. the element off. Hmm. Turn that belief off that's creating the despair. Switch it off. Hmm. That's good. That's good. I want to... Um, that's what you pay me for. That's it. That's it. You pay me? <laughs> Always. In love. That's good. I'll take that. Um, oh, this... Okay, this is a... I guess that kind of sits in the same um, area is what is the difference between um, vulnerability yeah. and oversharing? <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, um, vulner vulnerability is what you do. Oversharing is what I do. <laughs> <laughs> or vice versa. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, um, too much information is a real thing. Yeah. But it's not oversharing if the person you're sharing it with is trustworthy. All right? So it's actually the context that decides whether yeah. it's oversharing. Yeah. My clients, they're quite welcome to overshare with me because I know what to do with it. Hmm. I can sort it, yeah. and it's not going to go astray, and I'm not going to fire it back at them, and I'm not going to tell their, their, their neighbor or their girlfriend, it's not mm. oversharing. Yeah. But with their mate, it might be oversharing, mm. depending on the trustworthiness. Being vulnerable is just saying, you know what, I am struggling. If you've got any ideas, I'd like to hear them. You know what, yeah. I do. I am failing. There's something I don't know. If you know something I don't, tell me. Yeah. I am struggling. It's not a great day. Uh, let's change the topic. Let's go and do something else. Let's just, mm. you know, hang out or let's change the focus. Help me change the focus. I can get mm. out of this groove. I think that that's the time to be vulnerable. And sometimes if I'm with my wife and I'm struggling, I tell her I'm struggling. And uh, whether she can help me or not, it's good to know that it's good for her to know that I'm not withholding from her or shutting her out. Because mm. one thing's for sure, when you shut people out, you shut out possible solutions and possible uh, strategies and possible assistance. Sure. So share it. I guess I want to use that example for because that's yeah that that did answer it. Um, I want to go one step deeper. Is the what do we so there's for example there's a person, um, and they they are they're known for walking into a, a building and telling everyone that they've had this problem, this problem, this problem, this problem, this problem, and they're known as oversharing. What like what is the the, I guess the fix <laughs> You that. know, I'm well known in, in New Zealand as a counsellor. I can go mm. to any church anywhere and have people bail me up at the end of the service and start telling me their problems. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Common yeah. phenomena. Yeah. Usually I interrupt them. Usually I say, excuse me, but I need to know why you're telling me this. 
Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Why are you telling me this? Why are you sharing this? Yeah. I say, if you're serious about getting free of it, make an appointment. Come and see me. Hmm. If you're not serious about uh, getting it sorted, then uh, you, you, you're telling the wrong person. I'm, hmm. It's like a dentist. You yeah. know, does a dentist take an interest in your teeth? No. He might, he might see you need help and you need work, but he doesn't take an interest in your teeth until you're sitting in his chair. So mm. I don't try and help people until they loan me the power to help them. I don't speak into their lives until they loan me the right to speak into their lives. Mm. If they're wallowing in their, in their pain and they're having a thoroughly good time, I leave them with it. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. But I say to them, if you're serious about uh, getting a strategy to dig you out of this pain, talk to me. But I won't try to help people who haven't loaned me the power to talk into their lives because I'm wasting my time. Hmm. Yeah, I, I acknowledge their sovereignty. And their sovereignty says, well, I either want to wallow in it or I want to resolve it. And so hmm. I'll ask them straight up. Sometimes I will say, okay, you've told me this before. What I want to know is, do you actually want to resolve it or are you happy to wallow in it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll make it straight up. Do you want to wallow in it or do you want to fix it? Hmm. So I don't waste my time. And they don't waste my time, and I don't waste their time. That would be a pretend agreement. Hmm. So lots of people like to grizzle or moan or share their pain, and that's good. I'll listen, but providing that I'm allowed to speak into their life after I've listened. When you've listened to someone in pain, yeah. you've got the right now to speak into their lives hmm. and to help them devise a strategy that will dig them out of it. And if they don't give you that right, then I don't give them a right to dump on me or to vomit all over me their ugly stuff. That's fair. Yeah, I think so. It's a fair currency, yeah. <laughs> for sure, for sure. I don't let people tease me. Yeah. You know, and so uh, uh, down the back of the church after the meeting or we're in the car park, I say, you know, you're obviously in pain. Can I sit down with you? Oh, oh well, you're a professional counsellor. I couldn't afford you. Well, how do you know? You haven't even propositioned me. How do you know I won't do it all for free? So don't be presumptuous, please. Hmm. Just ask for help. Hmm. And then it's the balls in my court. And it, it happens pretty regularly. I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but for me, it's not about the money. It might have been 30 years ago, but mm. I don't need the money. What I need is to get them out of pain as quickly as I possibly can. Yeah. Yeah, because it's not God's will that you suffer unnecessarily. For sure. Yeah. So I just want to okay. get them out of that pain. Yeah. And if a client doesn't uh, cooperate with me, doesn't do the homework I set them, don't do the assignments I give them to do, I don't keep helping them because they're saying to me, actually, I haven't had enough of it yet. Hmm. Yeah. That's good. And I respect that. Yeah. I respect. You know, when the pupil is ready, then the teacher appears. Yeah. But are they ready? That's good. Are they ready? That's good. Mm. Let's see if there's any burning questions that I've got left. Um There was, there's probably one more um, so if we were I guess everyone wants to be healthy right everyone wants to be free and have hope what are some things that like you would say would be healthy tools to kind of always reshift or realign your brain to like towards healthiness yeah I would say is this habit my friend or my enemy Ooh. to beat any yeah. habit you have to first become fully persuaded that it's always, only, ever a liability in your life. Wow. I pull yep. people out of pornography. I pull men out of pornography when they become fully convinced that it never makes their life better. I mm. pull people out of anger and uh, a bad temper and rage when I help them understand that this thing never, ever made their life better. Mm. Yeah? It's there because they're ambivalent about that question. Yeah. Any bad habit, any addiction is still there in your life because at a deep level you're still double-minded about whether it's making your life better or worse. Everyone mm. does what they seem think is right for them at the time of indulgence. Mm. Even though part of their brain knows this is going to hurt later, yeah. they'll still do it. Because at that moment, they believe that that is the right thing for them to do, to deal with their troubles, to make the pain go away, to tell lies, to quick fix the situation, to get someone off their back. They do what they think is right at the time. Even if it mm. lands them in jail, they'll still mm. do it. Oh. Because at that moment, they believe that is the best thing for them to do. 
Mm. Yeah. So this was a big debate between Plato and Socrates, and it's under the subject of acrasia, A-K-R-A-S-I-A. And it's a massive debate, but it really helped me when I understood that Paul got it right when he said, I have become fully persuaded. Mm. You can only live with authority and purpose and focus and direction. My authority is directly related to how fully persuaded I am that what I know works. Wow. And when you ask for something in Christ, you must believe that you can have what you ask for. Hmm. And that will invoke it. And you will get free from your habit or addiction or whatever it is that's tormenting you only when you're utterly convinced that this thing is always only ever your enemy. Because God will only deliver you from your enemies, not your friends. Hmm. And double-mindedness is the enemy of personal growth and personal progress and success. No athlete wins the race if he's double-minded about what he's trying to do. Hmm, sure. You can't yeah. do it. Yeah. Wow. Somebody more focused than you is going to beat you. Yeah. Far out. That's good. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure. I think we'll, we'll wrap up there. Yeah. Um, I was just getting warmed up. I know. If it's always like that. It's the, all right. At the very, it's, it's, it's like that. Is there anything that you really... Um, uh, want to say to the, I yeah. guess the audience I, I would say uh, there's a book called Telling Yourself the Truth by William Backus get started on that book it'll introduce you to mental health it'll introduce you to the beginnings of climbing out of me- emotional pain mental pain hmm. it's uh, just called Telling Yourself the Truth and it's by that William Backus guy your memory hook is the god of wine If that you need a memory hook for an author yeah uh, but in there, you're going to discover uh, that actually your life can just get better every day when you value truth. When you love wisdom and truth, mm. your life will only get better every day. And every mistake you make and every failure you actually commit will be another rung in your ladder skyward. Every mistake mm. will be another step up in that journey of life. You'll fail forward every single time. And I love failing forward. I've done a lot of it. That's awesome. So for one last time, what was the book name again? Uh, Telling Yourself the Truth. Awesome. Telling Yourself the Truth. Wow. Well, honestly, it's been a pleasure. It's an honor to um, get get your time because I know how valuable, you know, getting your time is. Um, I've I've heard through, yeah, multiple years that, you know, it's, it's quite hard to get you. And I just thank you that, you, um, that you're willing to sit down and share well, your wisdom. It can be a bit of a queue and a bit hard to get in, but I always say, hey, where there's a will, there's a way. You haven't climbed in through the roof yet until you get actually let down through the roof. You're not that desperate. No, not yet. Not yet. It'll happen one day. Uh, (laughs) Who knows? (laughs) Well, honestly, yeah, thank you again. And um, this is really special. Uh, So, yeah, at Church here, we're uh, just heading into a mental health, mental emotional health series. It's a good uh, cause. And it really is, because I think um, it is a, it is a, I guess a, a, a roadblock or a wall for many people to and encounter God more. if you're stuck for options, come and do Living Wisdom. Yeah, honestly, yeah. seriously. Yeah. Living Wisdom is a two-week course and change your life forever. From what I've, from what I've seen, and I, I definitely need to sign myself Next up. Next course, January, Nelson, 20, 2022. And you can sign up on the website? You can. Awesome. Sweet. So that is uh, David R- Riddell. Again, thank you for your time. My pleasure. And, uh, Absolute. We'll see you all guys next time. Peace.